Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Jasmine Antoine, and I'm so happy to have you. Today, I want to talk to y'all about how God wants to give you a new name. Stay tuned. For a few years after I gave my life to God, I really struggled with insecurities. I struggled with it so much to the point to where I called myself God's most insecure daughter. I wore that crown. I didn't wear it with pride or confidence or anything like that. I wore it in shame, but I wore that crown. And if anyone was to ever tell me that they were feeling insecure or they were feeling down in the dumps and all this other stuff in regards to insecurities and lacking confidence, I would say, uh-uh, no, you're not as insecure as me. You're not as insecure as I am. I am God's most insecure daughter. I struggled with comparing myself um, to girls in a lot of different ways. I struggled with comparing myself to girls in regards to beauty. I didn't think I was pretty enough. Um, I really struggled with my black skin and loving it. I also struggled with acne a lot. Um, I still struggle with acne, but I've embraced my face more. I didn't think I was as smart as a lot of other people. I didn't think that I spoke well like a lot of other people. <laughs> I always felt rejected. I never really felt accepted for a while. And I truly, truly believe that people thought the worst of me because I thought the worst of myself. So I called myself God's most insecure daughter. As I would write to God in my prayer journals, I would start it off saying, hey God, or dear Lord, um, it's your most insecure daughter. Or whenever I finished writing in my prayer journal, I would end it saying, love your most insecure daughter. Even though I really struggled with feeling like I was his most insecure daughter, I would constantly ask God to help me with my confidence. One day while I was away at college, I remember reading Romans chapter eight in the Bible. I came across a verse that changed me and my relationship with God. That verse is Romans 8 verse 15. It says, the spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. After I read this scripture, I went to the cafeteria because it was dinner time, and I ran into my mentor there. I told her how I read in the Bible, um, how it said that God is Abba, Father. The reason why I was telling her this is because I was so moved in my heart that God is my father. <laughs> of course, I grew up knowing, you know, that God is our father, and um, he's awesome, he's powerful, um, he's strong, he's mighty. But it was kind of like one of those things where you don't really understand or you really don't have um, a good understanding of what it truly means until you go through it yourself. And so that's how it was for me while reading the scripture or after I read it or during the time that I was reading it, I had a better understanding that God was my father. And so like I said, after I read that scripture, I ran into my mentor in the cafeteria and I asked her if I could call God dad or daddy. I was so excited to know that God was my father. <laughs> she was excited for me and she told me yes. So I started to write in my prayer journal, addressing God as dad and daddy. I was started off saying, hey dad, hey daddy, how you doing? What are you doing in the world today? You know, just talking to God. But after a while of calling God dad or daddy, I decided to stop calling him that because I felt like that name um, was more so for my earthly dad. So I went back to Romans 8 verse 15 and I noticed that the scripture said Abba Father. And so I was interested in what Abba meant. When I looked up what Abba meant, I found out that it means dad, daddy, or father. So I decided to start calling God Abba. In my prayer journals, I would start saying, hey Abba, how you doing? Hey Abba, it's me. I love you Abba, dear Abba, all this other stuff. Abba, Abba, Abba. <laughs> I like to give my friends nicknames. I couldn't stop calling him Abba and I still call him Abba while I'm talking to him, praying to him, worshiping him, writing in my prayer journal. Just whenever I'm addressing the Lord, majority of the time, I'm calling him Abba. As I was doing this, growing in my relationship with God, talking to him and deepening my understanding, my understanding of who he is, I started to call myself Abba's girl because I understood a little bit more, I understood his love for me. I began to take on a daddy's girl mindset. So what is a daddy's girl mindset? Having a daddy's girl mindset is being completely obsessed with your father. A daddy's girl is usually running to the door when she hears the door open because she knows that her dad just got home from work. A daddy's girl is usually sitting in her father's room, maybe even on his lap, 
listening to every word he has to say. A daddy's girl loves listening to the music that her dad is interested in. A daddy's girl will most likely speak the way her dad is speaking. A daddy's girl will usually find interest in the food that her dad is eating. A daddy's girl is even willing to do whatever she can to make sure that her daddy is happy. She's usually raving on about how great her dad is. If she's hanging out with her friends and she hears something that is um, a contradiction to whatever her dad has said, you know, she's probably going to correct them and say, well, no, my daddy said this. And the reason why that she's um, correcting them is because she truly trusts in her father. She is a daddy's girl. She's going to believe every word he says. My name changed from being God's most insecure daughter to Abba's girl because my relationship with him was growing. It was growing so much and I started to feel his love for me more and I started to love him more. During all of that, I started to understand who I was in God's eyes. He wasn't calling me his most insecure daughter. He was calling me loved. He was telling me that I belonged to him. He was calling me accepted. Do you understand who you are in God's eyes? Or are you claiming an identity that God wants to change? If you are claiming an identity that does not line up with the word of God and God's will for your life, God wants to change your name. He wants to give you a new name. In Revelations 2, it says that whoever is victorious, that means whoever is going to go to heaven and meet Jesus and live with God for eternity, it says that Jesus will give them a new name. But God isn't waiting until you meet him. He wants to give you a new name here right now in your present life here on earth. In Isaiah 62, it talks about how God is giving his people a new name. They used to be deserted. They used to be desolate. They used to be empty and without, but now their new names are, I'm taking delight in you. You're delighted in, you're married, you're mine, you belong to me. So God wants to give you a new name right now, today. This year, the Lord wants to give you a new name. God doesn't want you walking in insecurities and no longer calling yourself his most insecure daughter. God wants to give you a new name, confidence. God doesn't want you feeling suicidal and depressed any longer. He wants to give you a new name, life and joy. God doesn't want you giving your body over to sexual acts any longer, taking on this identity that you're promiscuous. No, no, no. God wants to give you a new name. Your new name is pure and redeemed. God doesn't want you feeling lonely and rejected any longer. He wants to give you a new name, valued and accepted. God wants to give you a new name. He wants you to know that you are Abba's girl. You belong to God. I encourage you to have a daddy's girl mindset. When you understand your identity and who you belong to, while having a daddy's girl mindset, your mood starts to change. Your emotions begin to change. Your actions even begin to change. You begin to live your life doing things and saying things and however you live, you do it all to honor God because you know who you belong to. You understand your identity. You know that I'm Abba's girl. I have a daddy's girl mindset. However, my father, my dad wants me to live, I'm going to live it. Whatever he's pleased in, I'm going to do it. Whatever he's interested in, you going to find me interested in those things too. However he's speaking, I'm speaking the same way. And it's because I'm Abba's girl. You are your father's girl. Your father in heaven, you are his girl. You belong to him. The Bible says that we were once in darkness, but now we are children of light. I encourage you to be true to your new identity as being God's child, his daughter, Abba's girl. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus, God wants to give you a new name. Like I said in Isaiah, God's people were once called deserted and desolate. So that means empty and without. But God gave them new names. Their new names were delighted in and married. God wants to let you know that he is taking delight in you. He wants to be in a covenant with you. He wants to be in a relationship with you. Will you give your life over to Jesus? He's delighting in you. He loves you so much. In my intro, you will see Abba's girls. And that is just to remind you all that you belong to God. If you found this video encouraging, please share it with another woman, young lady, girl, anything like that. Because hopefully if you felt encouraged, they will feel encouraged as well. I have some information down in the description box below to help you grow in your relationship with God. I love you guys and Jesus loves you so much more. Bye.